Hey, so I wanted to make this video because while I was making the last video you saw, I stumbled across a couple good nuggets of information on some websites that wouldn't really expect to find it, but I found it nonetheless and I want to share this information and kind of talk about some bad information I was given in contrast to this information I just read, okay? So with that said, straight into it is, uh, while I was poking around for the information and some things for the last video when I was start talking about the NX2 Turbo, I went to a couple different websites to try to get some pricing information. And one of the websites I went to was Tune Plus. You know, they're one of the like many different companies that support the EcoBoost cars and, and whatnot. So I was scrolling through their product page for the Precision NX2 Turbo. And I noticed a couple interesting pieces of information they provided for that product. Uh, first and foremost, the most notable piece of information they provided was this right here. How it says that an NX2 Turbo has a power potential of 450 wheel horsepower on a Mustang EcoBoost 2.3 and it has a 550 wheel horsepower uh, potential on a Focus RS. And I'm like, what? How is there a... What? A hundred wheel horsepower difference that this turbo can make depending on the application, I'm like. And I thought about it, I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. What is different in a Focus RS engine that is in a normal Mustang EcoBoost engine? Because, you know, we mostly know they're pretty much the same. The cylinder head's the same. Uh, the engine block's the same for the most part, other than the pistons being slightly lower compression. What is making that difference? Not to mention, these are wheel horsepower numbers that they're quoting, and the Focus RS is all-wheel drive. Theoretically, it will have a little bit more parasitic loss than a automatic or a manual Mustang EcoBoost. So how is it making over, theoretically, over 100 horsepower more at the wheels with the same turbo? And I thought it meant the cams. The cams are different. Remember, I measured the cams that came out of the uh, the factory engine, which are RS cams. That is, in all intents purposes, an RS block. When I measured the RS cams, I compared them, yet you know, to factory Mustang cams, and they had like half a millimeter more lift or something like that. I'll throw the numbers up here because I don't remember exactly. Then I measured the Ford Performance cams I bought and measured that to the RS cams and they were even more lift and not just on the intake side, but both intake and exhaust because the RS cams only have more lift on the intake side um, compared to regular Mustang EcoBoost cams. I'm like, so you mean to tell me that little bit of lift difference on those cams is worth 100, over 100 wheel horsepower over factory EcoBoost cams for the Mustang. I'm like, that is nuts. And the reason why I say this is a big deal is because when I was trying to get some insight on whether I should even spend an extra money for the Ford Performance Cams uh, before I ended up doing all my own research anyway, and I reached out to Ryan at PD Tuning and he told me that he does not recommend cams because he thinks they're a waste of money. They're not worth the amount of work uh, to put them in. now right there i'm going to stop right there if you are rebuilding an engine they are totally worth it because you have to take it out anyway i can understand maybe if the engine was already in the car and you were going to do a cam swap that isn't the easiest job it's not the hardest but it ain't the easiest however if a hundred horsepower is on the table i still think the work is well worth it 100 horsepower is a lot but he said yeah i don't recommend cans i think they're a waste of time and money and i'm like there ain't no way. There ain't no way anyone else in the, in the world with some common sense would say that. And according to Tune Plus, just the RS cams over factory EcoBoost cams are worth over 100 wheel horsepower. So why would someone say that? You know, that is the worst information you could give anyone, especially if they're already rebuilding it. Like... And I get it, it's not just the price of the cams. I had to spend another couple hundred dollars on new um, 
cam buckets, the lifter buckets. But still, 400 some dollars or whatever for, you know, an extra potential hundred. And in this case, with these cams, I would imagine there's probably even another 30 or 40 wheel horsepower there or more i'm just being conservative so to say 150 horsepower you know worth of potential over factory cams for 400 bucks that's a no-brainer i'm sorry and a weekend's worth of work that is a no-brainer the fact that someone in the industry would say that is just mind-boggling but i i didn't think it actually cams were worth that much power but according to Tune Plus, they are. Now, the caveat to this information is either Tune Plus's information is way off and it isn't nowhere near accurate, or that is actually what you can expect from even just a small increase in, in lift and duration on the cam loops. So that's just something to think about. Furthermore, the second piece of information that I found on Tune Plus's website, which is more or less why I kind of trust with the numbers that they're saying about the power potential between the two engines is because they posted this. This is a piece of information and I had to learn myself because I couldn't find it anywhere. But it's a great reinforcement piece to exactly what I've made a video about not long ago and what I've learned. And this was on the same product page for the NX2 Turbo. And they said tune is required for increased power over factory. Now that's key because uh, it doesn't say tune is required for safe operation. It just says tune is required for increased power over factory. If you install this turbo without any tuning, it will not make more power than factory as the stock ECU control strategy targets torque and will reduce boost via wastegate and throttle plate to keep torque in check. You may see a 15 or 20 horsepower increase, but definitely won't see larger gains without a tune. Boy, wish I knew that. <laughs> I wish I knew that before I kind of started messing with things with the car because it could have saved me a little bit of frustration thinking something was wrong because I wasn't getting the power I thought I was going to get. I'd get, like I said, momentary spurts of torque and power and then the car would trim itself back. But yeah, and it's interesting that they mention that right on the product page before you go and buy that. Like, I don't think any of the other companies that sell that turbo mention that. And I, I respect that, that they give you heads up right there that you can put this on your car. It ain't gonna blow up. You can run it just fine, but you ain't gonna make more power because the car won't let you unless you adjust those uh, torque targets and allow the car to make more power. So yeah, interesting. Um, that actually, gives me a lot more respect for Tune Plus. Perhaps they could earn some of my business in the future. I just appreciate that they put that information there uh, before you click buy it now. You know, because a lot of people click buy it now because they don't know better. They hear all this information and then they put it on. Oh, I mean, most people know you got to get a tune, but a lot of people think you have to get a tune for these cars, mainly just to not blow it up. Just wanted to share this with everyone. Let me know what you think, throw your thoughts in the comments. Um, I think that's to wrap it up here for this video. Looks like the mail's came. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for next Cars Creative video.